Okay, we're going to start out our spanker fly. We're using a Mustad SL1 SNP DT, size one ot. Um, I like the big gap in the in these flies for my snook. It's a little longer shank and it's a heavy hook. This is a fly that I'm going to want to get to go down. We're also going to be tying in the sparkle eyes. This is made by the Montana Fly Company, MFC. They're the size larger gold with a red eye. I like the red eyes for my snook flies. Um, anytime I can get a little bit of red in my flies, I really like it. Our body material is going to be the Congo Bait Fish Blend. This is Chartreuse Needlefish. We're going to have a little crystal flash that we're going to add here. The, we're going to have a collar of a Palmer chenille. This is a medium fluorescent chartreuse. And we're going to finish it off with a Palmer chenille medium brown. So they're both the medium, which uh, really tells you the length of the fibers when they're talking about small, medium, large, and extra large. And without further ado, we're going to be using our what uh, thread here I like white because you can color white anything with a magic marker you know <clears throat> I'm gonna start right in the middle of the hook shank and I'm going to just wrap in a little bit I'm gonna cut that off wrap over those wraps and then I'm gonna carry it forward a little piece here now I'm gonna tie on my Dumbbell eyes. <clears throat> I like to keep the dumbbell eyes an eyelet length back from the hook. What this dumbbell eye will do, it'll invert the fly. The weight is going to be on top, so it'll invert it and the hook will ride up. And that, that will help tremendously, not only with our hookups, but you know, as you're lifting it up and the fish comes in to grab it, he's grabbing right over the top of the hook. So it, it really helps a lot. So I'm going to wrap right to about one hook eye length and then I'm going to set my eye on top. Okay, and I'm going to go over the top of it and I'm going to make a figure eight around the other side. Okay, so that's where that's going to end up and I'm going to do that two, that's two, right? I did the first one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I've got five figure eights there, but there's nothing to keep that from twisting on that hook. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the top and I'm going to helicopter under the eyes over the hook. What that does is it pulls all those threads from that figure eight wrap in to help secure it right there on top. Now I'm using a little pressure here, so don't, don't baby it. Don't think you can just do it gently. And then I'm going to do a couple more figure eights. One two and now I'm going to travel backwards now a lot of people will glue that eye in there and you can I will sometimes um, right now <laughs> it's not going anywhere so I'm gonna leave it right there I'm gonna travel back to the end of the fly so my thread is lined up right with the hook point I'm gonna take my body material Don't need necessarily to pull the whole bag out. I just pull out what I want. I'm going to use what I'm going to tell you will be about the width of a pencil lead. So when you get this out and you squeeze it, it should be at the width of a pencil lead. That's a little much, actually. So I'm going to get that width, right? You think of the lead core of the pencil down the middle of the pencil. That's about what I want this to be when I squeeze it all together. Don't really need a whole, so, so many times people use too much material. Don't need nearly as much as, as what people may think most of the time. So you can see that. It's, uh, this is, when I say pencil lead, it's not a regular little pencil. It's like uh, a carpenter's pencil. Okay, so that's the width of a carpenter's pencil. Now I want two lengths, two shaft lengths of the hook for the body. Okay, so one. To, to the hook point, uh, hook eye, and then two, okay? So that's my two body lengths. 
when I put that back here, that's about two body lengths off of the back of the hook. So I'm just going to grab it right there. I'm going to come in here with my scissors, cut it off. Now here's a little trick for you. When you see tires, they're telling you that they're doing this two body lengths. Here's the trick. When I set that on here, when I hold it, it's right there and right to the very end is two body lengths, right? Now, when I go to put it on, if you try to tie it in right there, you can't grab it. Roll your fingers back and that exposes some of that material. Make sure your thread is good and tight. I'm going to twist it here. Bobbin doesn't want it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to twist it here. See, I, 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 my fingers were up there. I just rolled them back. Now I'm going to go up on top, loose thread wrap. I'm pinching that in my fingers. I'm going to come over the top of that material, straight on top of it. I'm going to pull down gently. I'm going to go over one more time. Now I'm going to start to pull that down. I want to keep it right on top of the hook here. So now, now I've got it on top of the hook right where I want it to be. Okay. I'm going to go back just a teeny bit. I'm going to take my body flash. See, I've been using it. This is, um, I don't know how to explain exactly, the thickness of a toothpick. Okay, uh, probably 15-ish pieces, and I'm just going to get, get what I want. I want it to be just a little bit shorter than the length of the, of the minnow because, you know, if they're, I don't know exactly if they're seeing this as a lateral line or if, if they think of it as part of the scales of the body, but the scales don't go through the tail. So I don't go longer than, the, than my body material because I want that tail to have its own definition. So I'm going to go slightly shorter, pinch it here, just come in front, grab it, cut this off. <laughs> Roll my fingers back slightly, come above, pull down straight. Uh, twist my thread because it's kind of loosened up a little bit. You know, one more time and kind of just make sure it did what I wanted it to do. And indeed it did. I got lucky How about that. I'm going to go just a little bit forward of where all that thread is stacked up from that material. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my first wrap of the hackle materials we're going to use. This is that medium Palmer chenille, medium fluorescent chartreuse. Now I'm just going to rifle off, I don't know, maybe six inches perhaps. I'm going to cut that right off. I'm going to take these fibers. I want to lay them back when I tie this onto the hook. So you'll see that those fibers are pointing back. I'm going to twist my thread again. I'm going to capture that just a teeny bit. Now I'm going to travel this back over the top of my other wraps so that when I begin this wrap, it'll start right where those fibers left off. Now I'm going to travel this once again forward now that I've got to where I want to begin the tie. I'm going to go about halfway distance between the hook eyes the uh, dumbbell eyes and where I've got that tacked in. And I'm just going to palmer this forward. Okay. Right next one, right next to the other. Not on top of it. Just right next to it. Make sure those wraps are all facing back as you go. Sometimes you may have to twist the material a little bit. Pull them back. You know, just, just make sure they're headed the right direction. Get right up to where your thread was. You can see it's kind of pulled forward. Make sure you pull it back. Good. There we go. Now we've captured it where we want it. I go one in behind, one in front, another one behind. That locks it. It's not going anywhere on me. I can cut that material off. Some people would put some glue in there at this point. Fine if you feel more comfortable doing that. These are snook. If they want to tear it up, they're going to tear it up anyway. But I'm going to Get another six inch piece, approximately. 
Get out of there. Cut it off. Same deal. And we're almost done with this fly. So it's quick, it's easy, super effective. Make sure they're leaning back. Twist my thread, make sure it's good and tight. Get up there, just be able to capture it. And I'll make sure as uh, best as I can to get all the fibers out of the way. Now I'm going to carry my thread up right behind the eye, and then I'm going to go underneath right to the front of the hook. Okay? Now, I'm going to palmer this forward, keeping those fibers pushed back as best as you can as you go. Right on going. Now when we get right here, we're going to go over the top, through between those two eyes. And I'm going to come back between them, make a figure eight, and then one last time between them. Now I'm going to put just one or two wraps here. And then I'm going to capture the material. I'm going to pull all this stuff back in front. Go one more time over, locking it in. I'm going to trim that off. Now it's a little fuzzy up there, but when I pull this back, I can pull that back now. Go one time behind the eye. What I've done is just laid a little bit of that fluorescent right there. Okay, one wrap all the way around, go right back in front of the eyelid again. Now we're going to whip finish it, and we're almost done. Take my little whip finishing tool here. Um, I don't know, I've heard people say five times, seven times, three times. I just do, on, on a fly like this, I'm going to go, I'm going to whip finish it twice. I don't care how many times it go. Whatever you feel is good enough to secure it and not have it slip out. Trim my fly, my line rather. Cut that uh, thread off. Now I'm going to glue it. But again, I like a little bit of a red nose to this critter. So I'm going to take my red marker. Touch that thread. Take my glue, my head cement. By the way, this is uh, hard as hull. You know what else I really like to use a ton? Sally Hansen hard as nails. This probably costs five bucks. This probably costs two and you get twice as much. It does a great job. You can find it on sale. I'm just going to touch my thread wraps and we're good to go. That'll really soak into that. and. Uh, Make a great little head for you. Now, take this out of my vise. There's a couple little wily hairs, but nothing terrible. I'm just going to take my scissors. Put my... Oop, I'm going to trim off a few of the wild little ones. You know, Nothing really fancy here. This isn't like you're trimming the whole fly. Just those little squirrely ones. Now, if you want it barred, we'll just take a black magic marker and we'll put a couple stripes in there and that'll bar the tail. Um, a lot of times I'll tie a weed guard in on this, um, especially up down in the Everglades because there's you know a lot of mangroves. I'm usually casting it right up tight against the mangroves. Another thing that I always do, especially with my snook flies, I will take my file and I will file that hook point. It may be sharp, I can make it sharper. And you know, we catch, we're catching uh, anywhere from 28 to 40 inch snook on a fly. And man, when you get one that big, you don't want to have him get off because your hook point could have been maybe just a little bit sharper. And it doesn't take a whole lot, okay? I'm just trying to touch it up here 
That's all I got to do. If you can run that across your finger and it digs into your the top of your finger, it can even leave a mark. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but it almost hooked me there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those marks on my fingernail or not, but it's sharp now. And that is it. We are done with our little fly. I can always bar it if I feel I want to. There is the spanker. It's really a pretty simple, easy, quick little fly to tie. But that's how it's going to ride in the water. Okay. So we are good to go. Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong, and have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures. We designed this lure with over 12,000 serious inshore anglers, including many full-time guides, to go out there and catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, more inshore saltwater slams. And if you want a free pack to try out a sample yourself, click down below right now. We have one free pack per angler while supplies last. Click down below right now.